okay, now that my head is totally swollen, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'll fit in the car, as they say. Um, I would just like to say thank you very much to the Board of Directors of uh, the Washington Township Chamber of Commerce for selecting me for this award. Um, thank you to Assemblyman Moriarty and thank you to Senator Madden for being here and for giving me that um, presentation. I appreciate it very much. And I would also like to say thank you to the uh, business members here, my family, and my friends. Thank you for coming. Um, <clears throat> I have, I, first of all, I have to say the reason that I'm able to be able to do some of this stuff is because of my husband, Mark. He is the bread and butter. He is the brawn and the brains that runs the clock shop. And uh, he's been doing it, uh, I, let me see, this clock shop began in 1971. So I would like to acknowledge him because he, he is the worker base. So thank you. Um, one thing I'd like to say, um, John always says at the meetings that people buy from people they know. Um, I'm going to make it short, but uh, the clock shop, we have been in the Chamber of Commerce now for 20 years ongoing. And I don't know if there's anyone else who's that long standing. I think Stuart Gardner and maybe a couple other Bob people. Aaron. Bob Aarons. Where are you, Bob? Oh, there you are. Uh, and Bob and I were on the board together, so we could share some stories there. Um, but we've been part of the Chamber of Commerce for 20 years. The clock shop actually began in 1971. Mark's father is Hugh. Everybody thinks Mark is Hugh. Mark is not Hugh. Hugh is the father, and he started the clock shop in his garage. And I just came to find out this past weekend that Hugh Agassi was not the first clock maker. It actually was Gary. Uh, when his father built the funeral home for him, he wanted a clock for his funeral home. And needless to say, all the money, capital, went into building the building. So Gary purchased a kit and built it. So Gary is the first clockmaker of the family. <laughs> <laughs> and from there, it's history. Uh, Mr. Agassi made clocks and sold them in his garage. And then um, it was a good, a good business. And they built the building next to their home. And since then, it has been ongoing. In, I believe it was 1993, we opened our store in Haddonfield, and um, so we've been doing business ever since. One of the comments I've heard, and it's interesting, I wrote a bunch of notes, was about people working together and people doing things. And that was kind of my um, theme here that I kind of wrote down, because one of the things with the Chamber of Commerce that I have found, and um, having been a member since 1989, is just the camaraderie and the motivation and the information that you get from this business organization. Um, I've been, um, you know, as John was saying, they have business uh, breakfasts and luncheons and uh, seminars and whatever, and it's almost like the motivation. I feel like it's like you're in inertia. You're just standing still, and then this force comes alongside of you and kind of gives you that push to get moving. And it seems like whenever I come to an event, I come here and I get that little bit of push to do better or to try something different or to, you know, connect with one of the people in the room and do business with them. I wrote a list of all the, <coughs> I wrote a list of um, the people that I do business with in, in this, this is it. I wrote it and there's over 60 members. So it is profitable. And the networking opportunities that you have to do business with other people and uh, to become motivated. And as John always says, we people buy from people they know. So um, the last thing I'm just going to, I have a bunch of stuff, but I'm not really going to go there because basically um, in the chamber, you'll get the opportunity to, to network and to build relationships and to help the overall community of Washington Township. Because as you know, when you help businesses here, you're helping the town. And uh, I have one little incident. One time they were selling grandfather clocks off the back of a truck. And as John said, I can be quiet or I can be very loud. And uh, so my first reaction was, well, this ain't happening because I pay my taxes, I have a business license, and this guy's out here sitting on the highway selling clocks. So I contacted the mayor at the time, which was Mayor Luongo, 
and uh, he handled it very nicely. Um, but the thing is, you get to help the town when you help the businesses because you, we employ people here. We pay our taxes. We support your youth teams. We sponsor the drama clubs. So when you think about saving money, think about the businesses here in town because you're really not saving money. You're taking away from your actual community. So it's important that when you do business in town, you do help the community as well. You get to build relationships, you get to have fun, and we all know who the king of fun is in the Chamber of Commerce. Yes, Dave. <laughs> we have a lot of fun at the meetings, we have a lot of fun at the golf outings, and uh, we, you know, so you're doing business, you're building relationships, and uh, you're having a lot of fun. I know um, one of the themes, especially in the last election, presidential election, was change. And, you know, with, and we live in such an information society, my God, your head spins. But um, I do consider myself to be what they call a pragmatic optimist, which to me means that the glass is always full, but you always need to be prepared. And uh, with that being said, with the crazy economy, with the way things just are, you know, we need to stay focused. Um, we, we need, as business people, to build on a really solid foundation. That's one of the reasons I put the Proverbs book, and I, and uh, Assembly and Moriarty, I like the ones that you picked out. Uh, <laughs> my husband has one that he always used to tease me with, and that is, uh, better to live in a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. <laughs> but uh, there's another proverb in there that says, Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And that's how I feel about the chamber. We come together, we share ideas, we share things, and, uh, you know, good, bad, but you come away a little different, you learn a lot, and you, you change a little. Um, so I leave that book of Proverbs with you because there are really good words of wisdom in there. Uh, words of wisdom for business, words of wisdom for life. I feel if you do life better, you do business better. And one more thing. <coughs> I've had a chance to, um, I was in the library, and just by chance I picked up this book on tape, and it's, um, and some of you may have read it, Randy Pausch, The Last Lecture. If you haven't read it, oh my God, it's awesome. Or better yet, go on YouTube, because you can actually watch him and see his video presentation. It is so dynamite. It actually was his last lecture. He was dying of cancer and did die of cancer, but it's awesome and it's inspiring. So um, I give you that book of Proverbs. I encourage you to look at that Randy Pausch thing. And um, I'm just going to read this last station because I can see me getting emotional. Um, a few weeks ago, um, I was watching the television. And um, they had the, um, the miracle on the Hudson. And you could see that this could have been a tragedy. But it turned out to be a miracle. Um, now, I'm not saying that anything, some type of calamity is going to happen, but I'm looking for a miracle. And I'm hoping for the best. And I think when you're hoping for the best, it doesn't hurt to be prepared for the worst. <laughs> um, like a girl, good Girl Scout, you know, or Boy Scout, always be prepared. And uh, I found it per particularly interesting that two passengers being interviewed on the uh, U.S. Airways flight 1549 that landed in the Hudson, they were asked, what do you do when you are told to prepare for a crash landing? Their response was to lock arms and pray. So, whether you, you need a butcher, a baker, a banker, a candlestick maker, a chiropractor, a lawyer, an accountant, I recommend that we lock arms and support one another. And of course, if your clock has stopped ticking and you need more time, come see us at Hughes Clock Shop, where we always have time for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.